Hello everyone and welcome to Unitronics webinar. My name is Ophir Levy and I'm the head of the technical support in Unitronics. Today we are continuing our locked in learning series and today's topic is Unistream Modbus. We will start with a few words about Unitronics and its products and then we will proceed to the Modbus learning. Unitronics was established in 1989 and is the pioneer and leader of the all-in-one PLC with HMI. We have over 180 distributors in 60 countries, more than 1 million installations worldwide, serving almost any kind of industry such as water treatment, food and beverage, automotive, pharmaceutical and more. Unitronics manufactures more than 1,000 units per day and have a large and loyal recurring businesses. We have one unified programming environment for programming PLC code, design HMI, configure communication, and more. Unitronics offers four product lines, PLCs for simple and small machines, up to PLCs for complex and advanced projects. Our high-end product line supports over 2,000 IOs for one PLC. The software and support are at no cost. Today's webinar is Unistream Modbus, so let's have a few words about Unistream series. We have them in uh, three versions, the Unistream Modular, as we can see here. They are coming with three sizes of panels, 7 inch, 10 inch, and 15 inch. As you can see the resolutions, the 10 inch comes also in a version of a multi-touch. We can connect the IOs and communication models on the back of the PLC, of the, of the panel. And of course, using our expansion adapters, you can connect up to 2,000 IOs. And of course, we support also remote IO over Ethernet if you would like to connect your IO remotely from the PLC. Unistream series support a lot of features, a lot of capabilities, such as Ethernet IP, web server, sending SMS and email, remote access via VNC, FTP, SQL, MQ, and MQTT for Industry 4.0, and many more. The other version of the, of the Unistream is the built-in one. This is a powerful PLC in a comp compact hardware. And as you can see here, it comes in 5-inch and seven inch. This nice uh, PLC has a built-in IO and it has many combinations of IO so the customer can basically pick any IOs that he would like to use in his application. The resolution as you can see for both seven inch and five inch is 800 on 480 and supporting of course all the features of the Unistream series. These nice PLCs also support expanding the IOs by an expansion adapters and also remote IO. We have also uh, a PLC without HMI. As you can see here, we can also expand this field. It has a built-in IO and it can expand also um, with the IO modules and with the expansion adapters. The communication modules also can be connected, as you can see, on the left side of the PLC. Supporting all the features of the Unistream series and basically, we said it doesn't have a physical HMI, but it supports what we call a virtual HMI. Virtual HMI means that when you build the application for this PLC, you are also able to 
build your HMI screens. Later, you can pick any panel from Unitronic series or third party panels or your mobile or your tablet. And using VNC client, you can connect to the Unistream PLC and view and control the PLC like you are standing next to it. In addition, it also supports web server. So you can also build your web pages and view and control it via your internet browser. Now we'll start our Unistream Modbus learning. And let's start by the Modbus capabilities that Unistream offers. So as you probably know, Unilogic is the programming environment to program the Unistream series. In Unilogic, we can implement Modbus communication by configuration, and there is no must to use any ladder programming. We support Modbus over serial and over TCP, and we can configure Unistream either as Modbus master and slave. We can implement periodic operation to read and write data from any device that support Modbus. We can connect to many devices at the same time. Periodic, of course, means that you can just set the time for each Modbus command that the Modbus command will be sent according to this interval. We can also set aperiodic operations to write or read and send a single command using a trigger from the letter, or we can even send a periodic command to a group of uh, a group of commands. So basically, if we want to buy a trigger to send several commands at the same time, then we can also do it. As I mentioned before, we can connect to many devices at the same time and communicate over 485, 232, and also over Ethernet. Unistream can be configured simultaneously as master and slave. So basically, just for an example, we can be a master to, to some sensors and read and write information. At the same time, we can be a slave, for example, to other PLC or a SCADA system. We will review later how we can configure Unistream as a Modbus master, as we can see here in the screenshots. We can see here how can we configure the periodic commands and the aperiodic commands. The aperiodic commands later on, of course, can be triggered from our code. As I mentioned before, we can also configure the Unistream to be a Modbus slave. Since our memory in Unistream is dynamic and the user basically controls how many bits, how many integers you will have in the application, so there, is, there are no fixed addressing for the Modbus, like when you buy a specific device like a sensor, uh, it has its own addressing. You just open the PDF of this device and you see, okay, if I want to read the pressure, if I want to read the temperature, it has a specific address. But since we are a PLC and you are controlling the memory, once you configure it as a slave, you can use a batch of addressing, meaning you select which tags from your program will be for the Modbus, and the system can address it automatically or you can manually address it. In addition, we'll see later how we can also export all the slave addressing to Excel. This is very good 
when you are a slave and you want to provide the master all the addressing to read your read and write your tags. Here we can see the tags that exist in the Modbus struct. Each time we define Unistream a remote slave or, or, or a slave, the system will create automatically a struct. And this helps us to know the status of our Modbus communication. For example, how many sessions has been sent, how many succeeded, how many failed, what is the status right now, if it's connected or not connected, and whether we have messages that were dropped. We will talk later why messages can be dropped. After we'll finish the presentation, we will make an example of a Modbus over TCP. I will build one application for a Modbus slave and one application for a Modbus master. These will be two Unistream controllers that will be connected together on the same network. The master will basically read one coil, which will be the pump status. And it will also be able to write the pump a pressure set point. Okay, so we'll start programming right away. Here we can see now the uh, Unilogic, the programming environment to program Unitronics PLCs. I've already set up the IP address of the controller. We will start by configuring a Modbus TCP slave. Before we'll start with the Modbus implementation, uh, since I don't have a real IO connected to the controller, we'll do a kind of simulation and let's use our HMI to build the simulation. So first of all, I want to use a fixed text just to indicate on the HMI that this will be my slave controller. And like we said, I want to simulate the pump set point. So I will just write a text, pump set point. And we will add a numeric box to hold the pump set point. I will create a tag. We'll call it pump set point. It will be from type integer 16. Okay, in this case, I want that the master will be able to write the set point to the slave. So I will leave it as a read only because let's say I don't want that the slave will be able to change its set point only by the master. The second parameter I want to read by Modbus or write, it will be the pump status. So I will write here pump status. And I will use a binary image to simulate my pump status. So I'm taking a binary image. I will just link to images. I can pick it from our nice library of pictures. So let's just go to pumps. I will pick one image for pump 
off state and one pump for on state. Okay, you can basically just resize it. And I will link a tag, let's call it pump status, as we can see from type bit. And under actions, I will create an action to toggle the pump status, meaning turn it on and turn it off. That's it, this is for our simulation. Now let's see how we can configure the Modbus slave. So I'm going to protocols. Under protocols, we have Modbus. Let's open the Modbus. And here you can see I have the option to configure the Modbus as a master or as a slave. In this case, first of all, I want to configure this specific PLC as a slave. We can do it over Ethernet or over serial. Of course, if I will add other serial ports, this, they can be used again other in, under master or slave. In this case, since we are using TCP connection, I will pick the panel Ethernet. Clicking on add new slave. And now basically I have the option here, as you can see, to add new operation. If we touch this uh, little arrow, we can see here that I have the option to add a batch. So if I will just click on add new operation, I can add tag by tag to my slave addressing. But if I have many tags in my application and I want to add all of them in one batch, we can do it using here add new operation batch. Once we click on it, we will see all the bit tags in our application. Since I created only one, so we can see here, here this, this is the pump status, and we can see also these, uh, these are structs, the system structs in our application. But for now, I will just pick the pump status. You can see that I can already decide here if it will be read only or read write. It doesn't matter for now. I can just pick it as a read write and the system automatically gave it address zero. In general, if you would like, you can also change the address manually, but let's say I will leave it as address zero. Let's do the same for the register. We already said that we have one bit that will represent the pump status and one register for the pumps set point. So I will go now to the tab of the register. This time I will do it manually just to show you. I'm clicking on add new operation. I can pick a tag from the list of tags now I will link the pump set point and again the address by default is zero we can change it uh, you know that since uh, coils and registers are uh, having two uh, having different commands then there, are, there is no problem that the address will be the same for coils and registers and I will also give it a permission as read write Okay, in general, we are done. You can see here in the properties window, again, it's, uh, we can see the IP address of the controller. We can basically change the port if we would like, but this is the default port for Modbus. Uh, I will leave it as default. Uh, and uh, that's it for now. So now I will download this application. So let's download it. Okay. 
Okay, once we will finish the download, we will start programming the Modbus master application. Okay, the application is already downloaded. I can basically uh, just show you. Here is the here is the application. Here is the HMI. Uh, I wanted to show you how we can export all the slave addressing. Again, right now since we define only two tags, it's very easy to remember. But if you right click, you can export the slave addressing to Excel. So let's do it just to show you how it looks like. And I will save it, let's say, on my desktop. I will call it slave addressing. And I will just open to show you. OK. So we can see here the slave addressing, the name, the type, and the address, and the permission. So it's very useful uh, once you configure your Unistream as a slave and pass it to the master programmer so we can read and write to the right addressing. OK, so let's open a new project. Let's save this one, open a new project. I will call it Modbus TCP Master. First of all, I want to set the IP address of this controller. So let's do it. And I'm going also to enable the VNC connection. So later on, I can show you the HMI. I will create again a screen for simulation. So let's do it really quick. Let's call this one Modbus TCP master. Next one will be the pump set point. Take a numeric box to enter the pump set point. Okay, I will uncheck the read only so I can enter a value from the HMI. Now let's do the same for the pump status. Take a binary image. Create a tag, pump status. Let's link the images as we did before.
And this time, since I'm only reading the status from the slave, I'm not going to create a, an action because it's just going to reflect the status of the pump. Okay, once we finished adding the screen, let's go and configure our Modbus master. So first of all, I'm going to Modbus. This time I'm going to master. I'm taking the option panel Ethernet because I'm going to connect by TCP and clicking on add remote slave. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the properties window. You can see here the first attribute is called active periodic, meaning that we can we must link a bit here. If the bit is on, it means that the periodic commands of the Modbus will be executed. If the periodic bit is off, they are not executed. So let's link a bit. In my case, I want that uh, it will be always active so I can just link it to general on bit. General on bit is a system bit, which is always on. The second uh, parameter I need to configure is the Modbus communication. If you remember, the slave IP address was 10.1.60.112, and the port will be the default one. Slave ID, I'm not going to change since, since I'm working over Ethernet. It's possible to change it, but right now I'm not going to change it. Of course, in serial communication, it's a, it's a must to use a slave ID. We have a name and we have a response timeout. Of course, the response timeout, you see the default is 500 milliseconds. That means that once I will send the command to the slave, the master will wait at least 500 milliseconds for a response from the slave. In TCP, it's, a, it's basically very uh, uh, relatively high, high uh, timeout. But anyway, uh, if there will not be um, a response from the slave after 500 milliseconds, then the counter of the fail will uh, increment. If we get a, a proper response, then the counter in the struct of the success will increment. I'm talking about, you see here, here is the struct of the remote slave. And as we saw in the presentation, here are the sessions, success and fail counters, which you can monitor to see how it works. So first of all, let's say under the calls, we said that we have periodic commands and are periodic commands. Let's start by doing one periodic command. So I will add um, a new operation. I will pick my pump status tag. I want to read it from the slave. And using, uh, you see, you have the option to decide whether you want to read or write. And as you know, in Modbus, these are, of course, the standard Modbus commands. You can decide which type of command you want to use when you are using a third party slaves uh, in many cases in the table of the addressing you can see what command does this uh, address needs to be used and then you can uh, of course change it accordingly since it's a periodic command we can see here now these two columns every period so we can define whether we want every hour every minute every second in this case i will leave it as default every 100 milliseconds we have another two columns which are optional. You don't have to use it. Uh, the active means that you can link a bit here. If the bit is off, this command will not be executed. If it's on, it will be executed. So you can uh, on the fly, let's say, disable and enable commands. And the status, again, you can link here a register. And basically, you can get the status of the command, whether if it's zero, it was successful. If, if it's not, then um, it's just the standard Modbus errors according to Modbus standards. 
uh, like if it's in a legal address or a legal command and so on. All right, so after I created a periodic command, uh, let's download and see whether indeed we can read. Uh, you can see the address again. I didn't change it because it's zero, but of course you can change the address here. Uh, we can download it to the to the PLC and immediately check if we can already read the pump status from the slave. Okay, so we can uh, test it. So this is our slave. Let's connect also to the masters. So I will connect also to the master. Here is my master, here is my slave. And now we're supposed to see when we will toggle the pump status in the slave, we are supposed to see that the pump status will change also in the master. So as you can see, I turned on the pump and we can see that the master now read the status of the pump. Okay, I will turn it off. You can see that it's also turned off in the master. As you can see here in the struct, we can see how many sessions are being sent since we did it every 100 milliseconds. You see already how many sessions were sent. Uh, all of them are success, no fails, and no drops. Okay, now I want to show you how we can use the aperiodic command. Again, it's not a must. You can use only periodic commands if it's if it's uh, uh, good enough for for your application. But if you want to send a command only according to trigger and not uh, just by according to some periodic interval, you can do it by the aperiodic. In this case, let's uh, create an aperiodic command to write the set point to the slave. So I will click here, add new operation. Okay, we can see that already here, we don't have the interval because it's an aperiodic. We will link the pump set point. We can set the address. Uh, again, the address was zero, so I will leave it as default, but of course you can change it. This time the action will be right. Again, you can define here what type of Modbus command. I will leave it as default. And we can see that we have two new columns here. One is ID. This is the ID of the command. In a moment, when we will trigger this command from the ladder, of course, we will have to use the ID of the command. There is an option also for group ID. We will not use it right now, but as I mentioned in the, pre in the presentation, I can create here several a periodic commands, link them all to the same group, and then I have a letter element to send all the commands in one group. Okay, so now I will add my letter 
code for sending the aperiodic command. So I will go to the letter. Okay, and let's uh, trigger. I will just take a direct contact. I will call it right set point. And I will pick, if we'll scroll down, we can see here under COM Modbus. We have here several options. We'll talk about them later. But right now, I just want to pick the Modbus aperiodic indirect trigger. So I will just drag it here. The first input is my master. Since I can have in the same program, several masters. I can have one master over serial and one master over another port of serial and over Ethernet. This time I will pick the master which is over Ethernet. And input B is the ID to trigger, the command ID, like, like I mentioned before. Uh, we can link here a tag, okay? And I can call it ID. We can even put a constant, but uh, okay. By default, it will be zero. Then it's it's good enough for us. But this is just shows you that you can each time change the value in the ID and send different commands. So you don't have to use many blocks of the send Modbus periodic uh, indirect trigger. And the output, as you can see, is a status. Okay, so I will just call it a status register that will just tell me if it's a success, if it's in progress, and so on. And I will put a reset coil to the condition of writing the set point. One more thing I want to do is to use the less than equal because I want to check that uh, this command is not in progress right now. So I'm just saying, okay, if the status is equal to zero or less than zero, it means that the command was finished with success or with fail. You see that the, the minus uh, statuses, modbus error or invalid operation ID and so on are negative. So I'm just checking before sending the command that it's not in progress. Now, instead of generating this aperiodic command uh, with a button or anything else, I just want to do something very simple, uh, show you one more nice option. If I will go here to the numeric box, one of the attributes is called data entry complete. So I will link here the right set point. What does it mean? It means that when I will finish entering the set point from the HMI, this bit will turn on. So it means that once I will finish entering the data from the HMI, it will automatically send the command to the slave. Okay. So now we can download and test how we can change the set point in the slave controller. Okay, so let's download it. Okay, so again, I just want to mention I'm connected to a real PLCs on my desk, which are connected by TCP. Okay, so I will open my VNC. Okay, so as we saw before, toggling the pump status show me 
the status in the master. And now in the master, I'm going to change, let's say, the set point. I'm going to set it to 50. And you can see automatically how the slave changes the set point. Just to repeat again, when data entry complete, the condition in my code is to trigger the Modbus write command. Very easy, very simple. Okay, we can still see here the struct. And now I just want to say a few words, like we mentioned, about the what can cause uh, dropped messages. Messages uh, usually can be dropped in case, uh, mostly it will happen in uh, serial communication, let's say 485. You know that when you are using a serial communication, you are limited to some bound rate of, of, of the device. Uh, let's say, for example, if the baud rate of your slave device is uh, 9,600 bit per second, you must, of course, set your master also to the same baud rate so they will be able to communicate. And 9,600 bit per second means that you can transfer in one second up to 9,600 bits. It's really important that when you are building your Modbus application, that you are not exceeding the amount of this data in one second, because if you will exceed, you will start to get drops. This can be calculated by, you need to know how many slaves are connected on the serial bus, how many commands are you sending, and how, how much data you are reading or writing to each slave. You, again, remember that, let's say, one register uh, of 16 bit, it's two bytes, uh, which is, you understand that it's already uh, 16 bit, and you know that the Modbus protocol has some header of the protocol and footer and checksum, so you need to consider all this. And usually when you are using many commands with many slaves, you have to check the interval that you are setting here. Because for example, if you have 20 slaves and each slave has, uh, you want to, to send many commands, you have to consider what will be the period that you are going to use in order not to exceed the baud rate uh, of, of the specific device. This is, uh, again, the drop helps you to know if you already exceeded this uh, limitation of data according to time. One more uh, thing I wanted to show you is uh, for example, here, you see there is no column uh, for length, okay? Let's say you say, oh, I want to read um, from my slave device 10 registers. In case you want to read 10 registers, you have to create an array of 10 registers. So for example, if I will create here now, let's say I'm reading, uh, from my slave, uh, 10 temperatures. So I can write here, temperature, and I will set an array of 10. Once I set an array of 10, the PLC will send the command to read 10 registers. So the size that you are going to read or write is according to the link tag. Now, I wanted also to review the other commands that we have here. 
So we saw the indirect trigger. We have also Modbus uh, direct uh, trigger. So you can see I can just pick the command that I want to send, not unlike this one that you can change on the fly which command that you want to send. The other one is the group that we discussed. Again, you, you are not going to connect it directly here because it will be sent every scan and will the buffer will be uh, full. So just use a condition, of course, before. Uh, the group, as we mentioned before, if we will link several commands to a group, you just need to put here the group ID and you can send several command in one trigger. The last letter element that uh, we have here under Modbus is changing the slave ID. When you are setting your PLC as a slave, and let's say that uh, you send your machine to your customer and the customer wants to change from the HMI the slave ID, because let's say he has already in the system uh, a slave ID 10, so he must change your slave ID because you cannot have the same slave ID on the same bus. So using this element, you can let the user change the slave ID from the HMI. These are basically uh, the letter elements for the Modbus. That's it for uh, our session today. I hope that you enjoy the webinar and find this information interesting. Thank you for attending this webinar and we hope to see you in the next webinar.